Hey coders! Welcome back to the Coding Lab, your go-to place for developer insights, career tips, and everything you need to crack Android interviews with confidence. In today's video, we're diving into the top 11 Android interview questions for experienced developers, covering must-know topics like app architecture, performance, Jetpack components, Kotlin versus Java, and more. Quick tip, before each answer appears, feel free to pause the video, take a moment, and try answering the question yourself. This helps boost your confidence and improves real interview performance. And don't worry, if you don't know an answer, we'll also share what to say smartly during interviews so you stay professional and composed. Want more details on any of these topics, including code examples, deeper concepts, and learning resources? They're all listed in the description below, so make sure to check it out. Oh, and one more thing. We've also added some paid course suggestions for those of you who want to prepare deeply. Links are in the description. Before we jump in, don't forget to like the video to support us, subscribe to the Coding Lab for more career-driven content, and comment below with your doubts or other questions you want us to cover in upcoming videos. All right, let's begin and ace those interviews. Let's begin with question one. What is Android Z-Pack and why is it important? Let's kick things off with a powerful topic, Android Jetpack. Android Jetpack is a suite of libraries, tools, and best practices provided by Google to help developers build robust, maintainable, and testable Android applications with less boilerplate code. It streamlines modern Android development by offering solutions that are lifecycle aware, backward compatible, and work seamlessly with both Java and Kotlin. Jetpack also supports modularization and clean architecture patterns like MVVM. Here are some Jetpack architecture components widely used in production apps. View model manages UI-related data in a lifecycle-conscious way. Live data, lifecycle-aware observable data holder. Room simplifies local database access and enforces compile-time query checking. Navigation simplifies in-app navigation and backstack management. Work Manager manages background tasks reliably even across app restarts. Let's look at the follow-up questions you might face. How is Jetpack different from support libraries? Jetpack is a more modern, modular, and backward-compatible collection compared to the older support libraries. What are the benefits of using Jetpack libraries? Cleaner code, better testability, and lifecycle awareness. Have you used Jetpack Compose? How does it compare to traditional XML plus Jetpack UI? Compose uses a declarative UI paradigm and is more concise. However, sarcastic, it does require a new way of thinking compared to XML. How do you use view model and lifecycle in your architecture? Confidently in my architecture, I follow MVVM, model view view model, where the view model acts as the bridge between the UI and the data layer. Here's how I use them. Core Responsibilities View Model holds and manages UI-related data across configuration changes like screen rotations. It avoids heavy logic in activities or fragments. Loda, an observable lifecycle-aware data holder that automatically updates the UI when the data changes. Implementation Flow data source data originates from Room Database, Network API, or Repository Layer. View model, view model requests data from repository, stores the data in muted exit to the UI via immutable light view. UI, activity, fragment, observes the light view, automatically updates views when the data changes, avoiding manual callbacks. Have you integrated Room in your project? Yes, I've used Room extensively as the ORM, Object Relational Mapping Layer for Local Storage. Need to create this architecture for implementing Room. Entity represents a table in the database. DAO, Data Access Object, defines SQL operations. Insert, Update, Query. Database, the Room Database Instance. Repository, mediates between Room and View Model. When would you choose Work Manager? When would you choose Work Manager over other background tools? I choose Work Manager when tasks need to be executed reliably. Even if the app is killed, 
the device restarts, or the app is in the background. Why Work Manager? Guaranteed execution? Unlike Alarm Manager or Job Scheduler, it runs even if the app exits. Supports constraints like network availability, charging state, or idle mode. Suitable for both one-time and periodic tasks. Syncing data with a server periodically. Uploading logs or analytics when the device is charging. Backing up local data to cloud storage. When to prefer Work Manager over Alarm Manager when you need guaranteed execution and don't want to handle device restarts manually. Over Job Scheduler, when backward compatibility is required, Work Manager works on API 14 Plus. Over Firebase Job Dispatcher, Work Manager is now the recommended replacement. What is the difference between live data and state flow? Layout and state flow are both observable data holders, but they differ in design and usage. Live data is lifecycle aware and integrates seamlessly with the Android view system. State flow is part of Kotlin's Flow API and is better suited for compose and coroutine based architecture. Follow up questions and answers. Can live data be used in Jetpack Compose? Yes, but it's recommended to use state flow for better integration. How do you collect state flow in a fragment or activity? Use lifecycle scope or repeat on lifecycle to collect safely. Can lifecycle be used in pure Kotlin modules? Yes, though state flow is more idiomatic in Kotlin. Three, what are Kotlin coroutines and why are they used in Android development? Kotlin coroutines simplify asynchronous programming by allowing you to write code sequentially while avoiding blocking threads. They are ideal for network calls, database access, and background tasks. Core concepts Suspend functions for asynchronous operations. Launch, async for coroutine. Scopes, dispatchers for switching threads, main, IO, default. Follow up. Questions and answers. How do coroutines compare to Rx Java? C. Coroutines are lighter and integrate with Kotlin syntax. Rx Java is more powerful but complex. What's the difference between LANT and async? Launch doesn't return a value. Async returns a deferred. How do you cancel a coroutine? Use Ensday scope and call job.cardax. Where should you avoid using global scope? Avoid inactivities and fragments to prevent leaks. Can coroutines replace callbacks? Yes, they provide a cleaner and structured alternative. What is the difference between an activity and a fragment? An activity and a fragment are both fundamental building blocks in Android, but they serve different purposes in app architecture. Activity is a, represents a single, full-screen UI that users interact with, manages the window in which the app draws its UI. It's entry point to an application, defined in the manifest with intent. Each activity has its own life cycle on create, on start, on resume, etc. For high-level navigation or screens that stand alone, we use activity, also as the host container for fragments. Fragment is a modular section of UI and behavior that lives inside an activity. Also, it cannot exist without being hosted by an activity, directly or via Fragment Manager. Fragment has its own life cycle, but it's tied to the parent activity's life cycle. Fragment allows reusability. The same fragment can be used in multiple activities or layouts. When to use Fragment over for reusable UI components across multiple screens, for multi-pane layouts like tablets, master, detail screens. When you want dynamic UI updates inside a single activity. Can a fragment exist without an activity? No, it must be hosted inside an activity. How do fragments communicate with each other? Either through the hosting activity, a shared view model, or the navigation component. What is the fragment backstack? 
a mechanism maintained by Fragment Manager to handle navigation and allow the user to go back. When should you prefer the navigation component? For complex navigation flows, deep links, and safe argument passing. How does dependency injection function in Android? DI helps provide dependencies from the outside, improving testability and modularity. Android recommends using Hilt. Hilt simplifies setup using annotations like at inject, at module, at provides, and handles scoping. Follow-up questions and answers. Benefits of Hilt over Dagger? Easier setup, less boilerplate, lifecycle integration. Difference between at Singleton and at Activity Scoped? Singleton lives for app lifecycle. Activity Scoped is per activity. How does DI help with testing? Dependencies can be mocked or swapped during unit testing. Question 6. What is the difference between Compile SDK, Mins DK, and Targets DK? Compile SDK version. API level used to compile the app, Min SDK version. Minimum Android version. The app supports Target SDK version. The version app is optimized for. Question 7. What are sealed classes and how do they differ from enums? Sealed classes allow you to represent restricted class hierarchies, which are great for representing states or results. Follow-up questions and answers. Why prefer sealed class over enum? More flexible and can hold different data types. How does the statement work with sealed classes? Exhaustiveness is checked at compile time. Can sealed classes be extended outside their file? No, they must be in the same file. Question 8. What is the difference between recycler view and list view? Recycler view is a modern flexible alternative to list view with better performance and customization. Follow-up questions and answers. What is a view holder? A pattern that recycles views to improve performance. What's the role of Defutil? Efficiently updates only changed items. Question 9. What is view binding and how is it different from data binding? View binding offers type safe view access without XML logic. Data binding supports binding expressions, observables and logic in XML. Follow-up questions and answers. When to use one over the other. Use view binding for simple UI, data binding for complex bindings. How do you detect and prevent memory leaks in Android? Memory leaks occur when objects are unintentionally held in memory, preventing GC. Common causes include static references, context leaks, and misused callbacks. Prevention techniques Avoid static context references. Use weak reference where needed unregister listeners in on destroy or on pause. Use tools like Leak Canary to detect leaks. Follow up questions and answers. How does Leak Canary work? It monitors heap memory and alerts when activity leaks are detected. What impact do memory leaks have? Increased memory usage. Crashes OOM and degraded performance. How to prevent leaks in view model? Avoid holding references to views or contexts in view model. And that wraps up our deep dive into the top Android interview questions for experienced developers. Which question did you find the most challenging? Or which one do you think interviewers ask the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and I'll personally reply, or even make a follow-up video if you want more clarity. If this video helped boost your confidence for interviews, don't forget to like the video. It really supports the channel. And if you're new here, subscribe to The Coding Lab for more developer insights, mock interviews, and practical coding tips that actually prepare you for real-world scenarios. Also, check the description below. I've added extra resources, sample code links, and even a few advanced topics we couldn't fully cover here. Thanks for watching. Zrenia, keep practicing, and as always, happy coding. See you in the next one.